Hello, YouTube. This is a follow-up to the Casio FX21 Scientific Calculator Teardown and Repair video. Now that we have fixed its display problem, let's review the calculator. This was made, as I said in the previous video, in 1977 in Japan, about the time when some, like the Slide Rule Museum.com, consider the official death of the slide rule. By then the most basic scientific calculator could do more than the most sophisticated slide rule, for a lower price. This used to sell for $15 to $20, which in today's money would be something around $100 and was the entry model. It has a sleek design reminiscent of the 70s space age. I don't know if this was meant on purpose but this chamfer here is convenient for positioning the calculator at an angle with the help of some kind of rest for even better viewing angle and key pressing comfort. It employs a luminous vacuum fluorescent display, also known as VFD, and a single dedicated calculator chip for processing, display driving, keyboard scanning, clock generating and memory, as it happens with almost all, if not all, pocket calculators today. It takes two 1.5-volt batteries or an optional 3-volt DC-rated AC adapter model AD2S, which can be connected to this 2.5mm power jack. You can note that there is no polarity indication, perhaps because they presumed that you would not use an adapter other than the recommended. Since I could not find any internal explicit polarity protection, I did not know what would happen if you plug an adapter with the wrong polarity in it. You have a convenient on-off hard switch on the upper left side of the housing. Although it is not protruding much, you can still accidentally turn the calculator on and leave it like that until it fully depletes the batteries. It does not have an automatic turn-off feature. The manual says that the calculator will operate for 8 hours continuously on regular AA batteries or 22, on alkaline, and recommends you to turn off the calculator as soon as you finish your calculations, and when you do that, you will obviously lose all your data. There is no continuous memory. The VFD is probably what consumes most of the power, since it needs a hot filament like any vacuum tube to operate, and current flowing into the fluorescent plates and control grids to illuminate the segments of each digit. VFDs should not be confused with Nixie tubes, which do not require a hot filament and have a different principle of operation. In just a couple of years' time VFDs would give way to LCDs on pocket calculators, to never come back. Since LCDs consumes infinitely less power it allowed the use of coin cell batteries which could last months instead of hours. But VFDs had unparalleled brightness, were inexpensive to produce and remained strong in many other applications long after. They can be used in almost whatever lighting condition and have an amazing viewing angle. It is ironic that pocket calculators, which started with luminous displays and rechargeable batteries, struggled with power consumption until the emergence of LCDs, which made the rechargeable battery and the AC adapter unnecessary, just to finish as an application of a luminous pocket device driven by rechargeable batteries. You have, besides the four basic functions, the scientific functions, logarithm, exponential, trigonometric functions and hyperbolic functions with their inverses, the, what I call, convenience functions, reciprocal, factorial, square root, x squared, sign change, sexagesimal to decimal conversion, and three memory functions, memory in, memory recall, memory plus. You also have an EXP key for entering exponents up to plus minus 99 and a pi key that exhibits the constant up to 8 digits. Internally though it seems to work with 10 digits, because if we press by and then subtract 3.1415926, which is what you see on the display, we have 5.2 times 10 to minus 8, indicating there is more to what is actually displayed. It does not have implied multiplication, so 2 times pi, for example, must be explicitly entered. The HYP key is a shift key for selecting the hyperbolic sine, cosine and tangent functions. 
The arc is another shift key that selects the inverse of the trigonometric and hyperbolic functions as well as the second function of the other keys after the dash. And you have the angular mode selector for radians, degrees or gradients. The keys are made of plastic and have a nice springy feel to the touch, like an electronic organ key, perhaps. They do not have the feedback of a traditional HP or Texas instrument pocket calculator or of a computer keyboard. Although the display has 10 digits, the calculator uses only 9, the 10th leftmost digit is always blank, and numbers are justified to the right. You can only enter 8 digits in normal notation, and only 6 if the mantissa is positive in scientific notation. If the number is negative the 9th digit will show the minus sign in normal notation. Only 5 digits will be reserved for the mantissa, since the 6th leftmost digit will represent the minus sign. The exponent will have 2 digits and a third one reserved for the sign. Internally however it will apparently work with up to 10 digits for the mantissa. This is easy to see. If you enter 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and then add, say, 0 0.12, it will show you 12,345,678, but if you subtract 12,345,678 from it, you will have 0 0.12, not 0 which means that there were two hidden digits to the right of the display. Numbers exceeding the maximum range of plus minus 9.9 equal 9 times 10 to 99 will cause an overflow error and will lock the calculator until you press the AC key. Numbers greater than minus 10 to minus 99 and less than 10 to minus 99 will be rounded down to zero. The range for functions will vary though. Sine and tangent will only accept numbers greater than minus 1440 and less than 1440 degrees or 8 pi radians or 1600 gradients. For cosine angles should be less than plus minus 1530 degrees or 8.5 pi radians or 1700 radians. This is different from the manual that states only 1350 for the cosine. Obviously a typo. Precision varies with the function. The scientific functions will give you a six-digit precision, while the convenience functions will exhibit an eight-digit precision, because that is the display limit, but internally they seemed to give a ten-digit precision, as you can see. There is no precedence, so 2 plus 4 times 3 equals 18, not 14. The scientific and convenience functions can be used even if chained as subroutines to the four basic operations, except for, as the manual calls them, the power raising and root functions, which solve the pending operation and use the result as an argument. You may notice that, when you type the first argument of the power raising function, it takes a while for it to be displayed. What is in fact going behind the curtains is that it is calculating the common logarithm of the first argument and storing it in an internal register. This is so because it uses a property of the logarithms and exponentiation that makes it possible to write x raised to y as b raised to open parentheses y times base b logarithm of x close parenthesis. B in the case of this calculator is 10. For instance, let's calculate the log of 5. Now we multiply it by 2, and raise 10 to the result. Bingo! We have 25, which is 5 squared. Because of this choice of algorithm, these two functions will not accept negative numbers for the first argument. The convenience functions seem to be way faster than the other scientific functions. It is almost as if there are two calculators in the same chip. One with perhaps more complex algorithms that sacrifice a little precision in order to keep speed at a reasonable spec. And another one with less complex algorithms that can afford more precision and still maintain a fast speed. The factorial function is fast for small numbers but is the slowest for its limit of 69 factorial, which will take around 3.5 seconds to perform. It apparently does not check beforehand if a number entered is within its range. It relies on the fact that its algorithm will let any number that is not an integer from 0 to 69 overflow the calculator.
the sexagesimal to decimal function converts hours, or degrees, minutes and seconds to decimal but not the other way around. It also lacks a common feature of almost any calculator today that is the percentage function. It has on the other hand a common feature that is called operation with a constant. It is handy for formation of tables. If you enter a constant and press one of the four operations two times any other entry followed by the equal key will be processed with the constant and the operation chosen. So if you press 2.54 times times and then press 2 equal for converting inches to centimeters you will have 5.08. If you now press 4 equal you will have 10.16 and so on. If instead of entering a number, you simply press equal, the constant will operate on itself. This is a convenient way to quickly obtain exponentiation to whole numbers equal or greater than 2 when using multiplication, or to negative whole numbers, including 0, with division. For instance, 5 times times equal will give you the square of 5. If you press equal again, we'll have the cube of 5 and so on. If you press 7 divided by divided by equal, you will have 1. Equal a second time will give the reciprocal of 7. A third time will give you the reciprocal of its square, and so on. You can use it as a counter by pressing 1 plus plus 0 and then the equal key repeatedly. Likewise, the constant with the minus operation can be used for countdowns. M stores the current number on display in the memory. MR recalls it to the display. To clear the memory, you just press 0 and then MN. The M plus key sums the current number on display to this memory and like the power raising key it resolves any pending operation before accepting the result as an argument. The C on this key stands for clear. It allows you to re-enter a different argument. For example, 2 plus 3, but no it was 4, equals 6. After pressing C it will also give you the opportunity to choose a different function, so 2 plus 4, clear, times 4, equals 8. It even works with the scientific functions, 1 plus sine of 45 degrees, clear, minus cosine of 30, equals 0 0.133 etc. The AC key, which stands for all clear, will reset the calculator, unlocking it from an error or overflow condition if present clearing the display and cancelling all pending operations and constants, except for the memory. The manual for this calculator can be found on the net thanks to a good soul who bothered to scan it and make it available. It is written in English and Spanish side by side, but it is more of a quick reference guide. It depicts the calculator with unrealistic exaggerated display numbers and says this precision electronic calculator will serve you well for years if properly looked after, which is true. This lady here is 39 years old and going strong. It seems to have a sturdy constitution, and the teardown in the previous video showed that Casio used quality components inside. The manual also boasts a zero suppression feature which means that redundant leading or trailing zeros will not be displayed. This helps not only with readability but with power consumption especially in case of luminous displays like the VFD. It also talks about an automatic accumulation in the four functions. I am not sure what this means exactly, but it perhaps has to do with the way the old adding machines used to behave or something of the like. I also could not find a definition for true credit balance, but I suspect this has to do with being capable of entering and displaying negative numbers with a minus sign, who knows. Calculations involving decimal places means that, differently from slide rules, where you need to keep track of the decimal places, this calculator will take care of it for you. Also with old mechanical adding machines you had to keep track of the decimal point manually. All of this we take for granted today, but at that time, it was probably recognized as a limitation that the then new technology endeavored to overcome. And with this we get to the end of our review. I hope you enjoyed it. A beast from the past. Sleek. Relatively compact, stylish, working, useful, a bit power hungry, perhaps, but nothing an AC adapter cannot solve. Thanks for watching. Have a good night and stay beautiful.